Something strange is happening to our food. It's no longer simply something we eat, but an idol we're encouraged to worship. We're told that blueberries and broccoli will prolong our lives, and superfoods will save our souls. All over Britain, great temples to health food are springing up, and a new religion has been born. It's actually more important what you don't eat than what you actually eat. This is a film about its most devoted worshippers. Men and women who believe they have discovered the healthiest diet on the planet. They're called raw foodists. They don't eat wheat, dairy, sugar, meat or fish. And most importantly, everything they do eat is completely raw. This is a raw lasagna and it's really delicious. When you eat cooked food, you're not getting any enzymes in your diet at all. So you get old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think of it as food anymore. I don't walk down the bread aisle, I don't smell it and think, oh my God. Although their controversial views may seem a bit unappetizing, more and more people are joining them. But can a fixation with healthy eating turn into an unhealthy habit? So this is fresh pea. And this is a daily thing? Yeah, daily urine therapy. At least once a day. Don't pull that face. What does it taste like? Mm. Not much today. It's a little bit salty, but not, not too strong. And, and why, why doing that? Mm. Because this contains all the information about my body right in this moment and what's going on now, so it's my way of checking in and saying, this is what's happening, now you know how to rebalance. Suki has a very unusual diet. Like all raw foodists, she believes that cooked food is poisonous. <laughs> what would happen if you had a hamburger? A hamburger hasn't passed my lips since 1989, and if I had one now, I'd be really sick and I'd have a food hangover. I eat no potatoes, no bread, no pasta, no milk, no cheese, no meat. Nothing that has been tinned, processed, refined, boiled, fried. If you cook something, it depletes it of enzymes, nutrients, and it changes the molecular structure of the food, and it means it's harder work for your body to then assimilate that food. So, so what is the left for you to eat? Vegetables. It doesn't look that, that appetising. It's amazing. And you've pretty much got uh, nutrients which go into your bloodstream immediately without any digestion involved, so you've got instant energy. So you can live on just on juice quite easily and feel really, really good. If Suki is careful about what she puts into her body, it's probably because she spends her days watching what comes out the other end. I haven't been able to have rice crackers since I saw rice crackers come out of somebody once. Some tubes are completely solidly blocked with, with heavy, heavy cement constantly. The worst things are really are, um, are people who live on, on, on junk food, fried food, uh, rice, bread, dairy, and they somehow think that they're going to survive. And sometimes it's the skinny ones who think, oh, I'm really thin, I don't have to worry about my weight, that they eat the rubbish, and <laughs> they're coming for a colonic, and it's a bit of a shock to the system. So would it be better if people didn't eat bread? People would generally feel better if they didn't eat bread, yes. And what about milk? People would feel a whole lot better if they didn't have any pasteurised, homogenised cow pus, yes. Hang on, there's a deep breath coming. You've been juicing, girl! Yes. When you see what food is doing to people, you really can't stomach it yourself anymore. You know? There's no way around it, because you're seeing the evidence every day, day in, day out, day in, day out. Thank you.
A radical dietary conversion can strike anyone at any time. A couple of fresh chilies for the juice. Oh, and darling, we need some lemons. Until recently, Kate and Andy didn't think twice about their food. Hang on, is this vegan wine, Kate? But then they discovered the raw way of eating, and their lives have never been quite the same since. Your, your sense of taste, your sense of smell, your perception of things change as you change your diet and you change your, 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 your lifestyle. And I'm actually, funnily enough, you go into Sainsbury's and apart from uh, the vegetables, there's pretty much nothing else in there we can actually eat, to be honest. Really, I mean, you know. What, really? Well, meat, fish, eggs, chocolates. I mean, the milk aisle's out. You know, the takeaway curries are out. Uh, Everything basically is pretty much uh, not to our taste anymore. <gasps> you don't take American Express, do you? Although they've been married for 20 years, Kate and Andy only went raw a few months ago after going on an enema holiday. Now they follow a rigorous new regime. Well, I call it juice and sluice, because basically you juice and you give yourself enemas every night and morning. We have a coffee enema in the morning normally, and in the evening we'd have maybe a lemon enema, or a lemona, as I call them. In fact, I had a very nice one this morning, a coffee one it was this morning. And whenever I smell coffee now, I never think of a cup, I think of, oh, it's time for an enema. Whose idea was it to go on the enema holiday? It was actually Andy's idea. He came home very excited, saying, how do you fancy to do a holiday like this? And it took me a little while just to sort of think it through, and because it wasn't, it wasn't perhaps the first thought that would come to mind for a holiday, but actually it was, it was fabulous. So this is an enema bag. You fill it up with water to about there, and then the rest of it's coffee, and then you basically um, put a bit of, um, bit of oil on that, and a bit of oil on your bum, and shove it up, and that's about, it's about that high, and gravity basically um, lets the water feed into the colon, and at the same time you often massage your stomach, and now, I mean, I, I, I do a bag in one, basically that whole lot goes in me in one go. Some raw food fans are less recent converts. Kate, who has three children, stopped eating cooked food 14 years ago. Very simply put, when you cook food, you kill it. There's a whole load of enzymes, vitamins and minerals that are destroyed by heat. Um, and so when you're not cooking your food, it's literally more alive. And so you're eating food that feels more alive, so you feel more alive yourself. And whatever Kate eats, her three children eat too. In fact, they've never had a cooked meal in their lives. Tell me a bit about what your um, favourite food is. Well, um, it's um, corn salad. Corn salad? Yeah. It's, um, it's, a type, it's a type of leaf, it's a bit like baby spinach. I have that every day, sometimes twice a day. They don't have bread, they don't have pasta. Well, they, sometimes they have corn pasta, if I put it in a raw pasta sauce. Um, but they never have wheat, they never have sugar, they never have dairy. Yeah, we just try and eat food that's as natural as possible. So what's in there, Ruben? I've got um, corn salad, um, a powder that Mummy's made, um, the pumpkin seed oil, liquid aminos, um, olives, I'm going to put some broccoli in, and then that's it. And what if they, what if they went to um, like a friend's house and they were offered, I don't know, a cheese sandwich? Um, I don't think they'd even know what it was. To make sure her kids don't miss out on anything, Kate fills her cupboards with a stash of tempting treats. These are the goji berries, these are quite popular now, especially with the children. They're full of amino acids, vitamins, minerals. This is hemp. Hemp is one of the best sources of protein on the planet. I have crystal manna. It's a Klamath Lake blue-green algae. It grows in Oregon, in a special lake in, in Oregon. Um, I just put like a spoon of that on their food. 